Just a few housekeeping rules before we begin. For those attending either virtually or on your phone, please keep yourself muted to ensure no interruptions to the evening. For those attending either virtually or on your phone, please keep yourself muted to ensure no um, interruptions for tonight. For those of you calling in, if asked to speak, you can mute and unmute yourself by using the buttons on your cell phone or by dialing star six. For those of you on a computer, if asked to speak, you can mute and unmute your audio by moving your mouse, then using the buttons on the toolbar in the bottom left of your screen. You can also mute and unmute yourself by using keyboard shortcuts. On Windows, you can press Alt-A. On the Mac, you can press Command-Shift-A. If you are attending virtually and would like to ask a question or make a comment, Please still go to the comments icon on your Zoom page and type your comment into that section. If you are attending via a phone and would like to ask a question or make a comment when asked, please use the raise hand function. Finally, please say your name every time you speak for the benefit of those calling who cannot see you. Does anyone have any questions about using Zoom or Zoom adequate before we get started. Okay, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce county staff in attendance tonight. Um, from planning and zoning, we have Mary Beth Cook, director. We have deputy director of zoning, Judy Makel. Deputy director of planning, Carolyn Sunderland. Long range planner, Jenny Plummer Welker. Planner two, Jessica Gatano from the Department of Pu um, Trans Public Transportation. We have Division Chief Sandy Wobbleton. From the Department of Economic Development, we have Tourism Program Specialist Hillary Daly. And from Natural Resources, we have Division Chief Karen Mal Mal Malinas. Um, I don't believe we have anyone here at the moment from Public Works. I would like to start off by giving you a little background on how we got here. In March 2020, the Hogan administration announced a 3.78 million in fiscal year 2021 grants to support bicycle safety and access improvements for projects across the state. The funds are made possible through the Maryland Department of Transportation's Kim Lanfear Bicycles Network Program. Founded in 2011, the Bikeways program provides state transportation funding for planning, design, and construction of bicycle infrastructure, including bike lanes and shared use paths. Calvert County applied and received an $88,000 grant with a matching fund contribution of $22,000 for a total of $110,000 in funds. The Mead and Hunt consultant firm was hired to start the feasibility study. This grant project will determine the feasibility of alignments serving important commercial, recreational, and residential destinations in the Dunkirk and Prince Frederick Town Centers. This grant work has and will include coordination with existing and ongoing planning efforts, such as the Town Center Master Plan updates, as well as high-level traffic, civil, environmental, and right-of-way assessments to determine feasibility. The final deliverable for this project will be a town center pathway plan for Dunkirk and Prince Frederick, which will include discussion of the planning process, alignments that were investigated, documentation of factors that led to the preferred alignments, and concept plans for each recommended alignment. We seek your comments tonight on the alignments being identified and gladly welcome any questions that you may have. At the end of each town center presentation, we will pause for questions and answers pertaining to that town center. With that being said, I would like to introduce our presenter tonight, Jamie Kendrick, AICP Transportation Project Manager from Mead Hunt to start our presentation. Jamie. Great, good evening, Tamara. Um, it's good to be back with uh, friends in Calvert County. I wish that the public health situation were such that we could be doing this in person, but here we are, hopefully by the spring we'll be uh, back together. So what I'd like to do um, 
this evening, and, and I'm juggling a couple of screens here, so please bear, uh, bear with me if I, I mess this up. What I'd like to do is just start to talk about uh, how we arrived at pursuing this grant with the county uh, and uh, why we are pursuing these two particular town centers. Uh, then talk a little bit about the different, give a little bit of an orientation about the types of bikeway facilities that there are. Um, and then talk about specific concepts for Dunkirk and Prince Frederick and then wrap up with some next steps. As Tamara mentioned, uh, we will pause after uh, the few slides for Dunkirk for some comments and discussion, then we'll pause after Prince Frederick uh, for some uh, discussion as well. Um, so with that, um, let me just, why, why bikeways in, in Dunkirk and, and Prince Frederick? So, you know, these are two, uh, obviously the town centers are, are intended to have a different character than the more rural parts of the county. And biking and walking as indicated in the comprehensive plan, uh, while not likely to be a major commuter mode uh, for folks in the county is still an important part uh, of, of mobility uh, and recreation uh, for residents and visitors to the county. Uh, we heard a lot during the Prince Frederick Town Center Master Plan, and I understand there's a lot of discussion now in the Dunkirk Master Plan about the need to, to implement this part uh, of the vision. And so now we needed to start by doing a little bit of, you know, concept design and, and figuring out what works, uh, which is what brought us here tonight. Uh, so next slide, here we go. So there's kind of four primary um, kind of uh, bicycle facilities that we are talking about tonight. And the it, it really will depend on the amount of right of way that we have to work with or the amount of space, space that we have to work with, uh, traffic volumes, um, and, um, and some other considerations I'll talk about in a minute. But from the left, a shared use path, this would be the ideal facility uh, anywhere and everywhere that we could do so. A 10 to 12 foot uh, uh, pathway with a buffer to the road uh, for uh, people to, to walk and bike. Um, we're not obviously getting that uh, to that point in, in an area that's already built uh, that's already built up, but we do see a couple of opportunities for that uh, that we'll show you as part of this master plan. The next kind of uh, facility and the next two really are kind of variations on the theme are protected bike lanes and just right bike lanes where we make very clear to drivers uh, that there are, they should expect to see uh, bicyclists uh, in this area, uh, that those bicyclists have typically a five foot wide lane and a two foot uh, buffer from passing uh, cars, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, uh, and ideally we would put in some type of a treatment, whether it's flex posts or other uh, delineators, sometimes it's a curb, uh, sometimes it's um, uh, raised um, uh, lighting or, or uh, reflectors, uh, just to give a little bit more separation uh, and, and notice to drivers uh, that there are, they should anticipate uh, bicyclists in the area. Uh, then the, the regular bike lane, which is um, tends to be on lower volume roads. Um, and then finally the paved shoulder where uh, you don't put any particular markings, you, you would put a sign up. And these are, you would do the paved shoulder where there's very low likely um, bicycle use. You simply wanna make it known uh, to motorists that there could be bicyclists here, but you're not getting much, uh, much volume. Um, so with that, let me, you know, our primary goal in this project is to connect key destinations within town centers on a low stress network of bike uh, facilities for users of all ages and abilities. And you'll see this same set of um, four pictures on, on several of the sli slides to remind us that, you know, our goal here is to create um, uh, pathways that serve primarily short trips, not intended to connect the town centers, not intended for trails to go from top to bottom. Uh, of Calvert County, but really intended to serve uh, a variety of users in, in very localized uh, trips. The, uh, the, you know, kind of the, just the nature, the topography, the length uh, of Calvert County makes, uh, you know, a full end-to-end -end trail kind of impractical and, and incredibly expensive for the amount of use that it would get. Not to say there wouldn't be value in it, but uh, kind of given the priority we've heard in the town center master plans, we wanted to come up with uh, concepts that could work now and over the next five to 10 years. So we start by identifying 
key origins and destinations, you know, neighborhoods, schools, churches, community centers, the Main Street area. Um, we, we just put those on a map and then we start to connect the dots. But then we have to actually design something. And you look at, these are kind of five of the major factors that we look at. You know, how much room do we have to work with? How fast and how many cars are there? Um, and that leads us to figure out if we can be on or off street. Then we have to figure out um, if we can be potentially off street, where are the utilities? What is the drainage situation? What else do we have to work our way around? Uh, and that may push us back into the street. Uh, but at the same time, when you're back into the street, you have lots of driveways and street crossings uh, they have to contend with that are a conflict point and a safety hazard uh, that we try and um, mitigate as much as possible. And then kind of finally, streams, culverts, bridges uh, are a whole separate um, uh, set of considerations that we need to work our way through. Obviously, we want to try and avoid um, having to build some type of a structure if we can do that at all. Maybe we can get ourselves to a small boardwalk or a small um, uh, 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 prefabricated bridge, but we want to try and avoid those kind of crossings wherever we can. And then how do you implement these things? So it could be some very minor uh, retrofits of existing roadways, and we'll show a couple of examples of that night, of that tonight. It could be um, that we incorporate uh, a bicycle facility into a resurfacing or reconstruction project, and we'll show, I think, what is an example of that tonight. It could be part of a new uh, housing or commercial development project that the developers are required uh, to incorporate a bicycle facility. Uh, or there are finally, there are these higher cost, longer lead time, more design uh, and construction intensive uh, projects that frankly, we wanna try and avoid, but in order to make some of the connections that we want to make, uh, there are a couple of those that you will, you will see this evening. Uh, but again, those are more locally oriented, not intended to connect town centers that connect within the town centers. So that was, those are our goals. That's a little bit about our process. And why don't we just then start with Dunkirk? And uh, in starting with Dunkirk, we start with what we've heard during the town center master planning process. And I can't quite see in the list of participants who's from Dunkirk and who's from Prince Frederick. So I'm gonna go through these slides in just a couple of minutes and then open up for some, for some questions. Um, so in Dunkirk, this is our intended network to, to connect the two parks, uh, to connect the neighborhoods, particularly those on the south and east side, uh, Apple Way and, uh, and such uh, up to the shopping centers and then to connect around through the shopping centers uh, themselves as safely as possible. Um, so uh, in these are in order of, of uh, kind of ease of implementation, uh, if you will. Something on Prince Frederick Boulevard is, or excuse me, on uh, Town Center Boulevard it's gonna be relatively simple to implement. Uh, this Ward Road Trail that we will talk about is a lot more complex, uh, but we, all, we think all of these are feasible. You're not seeing a bunch of other lines on the map. We looked at things on Ferry Landing. We looked at uh, things coming up Maryland 2-4. We looked at more crossings of 2-4, but we took those off because we felt like they weren't high value, uh, they weren't necessarily safe, uh, and um, they may, um, detract from getting to the core network uh, built in, in, uh, in Dunkirk. So starting off um, with what we think is the lowest hanging fruit would be print, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna say this 29 times, I'm gonna say it wrong, Town Center Boulevard. Uh, you have obviously the center of activity and, and circulation uh, with the roadway running behind the shopping centers uh, and connecting over to the ball fields at Dunkirk Park. Um, but you also have on, the, uh, on Town Center Boulevard today, a lot of excess road capacity. And we don't think that's likely to change. We think there's a lot of room to work with. So what we're proposing on uh, Town Center is to reduce to one lane in each direction with a five foot uh, bike lane and two foot uh, buffer. We may or may not put in here the, um, the protected, um, the protections like the bollards and the, um, the flex posts um, and that we would, so we would convert those outer lanes to, to bike lanes. And then when you get to Maryland 2-4, uh, State Highway has some ideas in mind to help uh, make an at-grade crossing uh, safer. We know that during um, you know, sports seasons, we see kids and families running across 2-4 anyway, that independent of a bike lane project would be um, uh, a welcome addition to, to make that 
a little bit safer. Um, so that's the that's Town Center Boulevard. And you know, when you get to, I should say, in all of these, there's devils in the details. And here, the devil is really at the um, at the two endpoints at um, at Ward Road and at um, at two four. But uh, we we have solutions. I'm just not going to go into great detail about them tonight. Um, next up is we have heard a lot from um, the the town center planning process about connectivity from uh, the park into the other shopping center on the west side of um, uh, on the west side of two four, and uh, the ability to you can't really get up to and across Ferry Landing Road these days. We had, we had heard some in the Dunkirk uh, town center planning process about an auto entrance. Uh, that's not where the discussion is heading, but there is a couple of feasible options for getting a pedestrian entrance uh, up that hill between the church and uh, the um, uh, drainage area uh, or around from the other parking lot by the ball field. We think there's two or three feasible routes that could get you uh, up and then you, a landing area and then across into the, the shopping center parking lot. Um, we would put in a high visibility crosswalk there at Ferry Landing uh, into the shopping center as well. Um, there are some slope and drainage issues. Uh, Parks Department has expressed some concerns about after hours security and nighttime access to the park generally being restricted. Uh, we are conscious of that and, and I know planning and zoning is uh, uh, definitely keen to continue working through that issue uh, with parks and recreation. We had looked at something on ferry landing itself, but we didn't feel like um, there was much uh, purpose to doing so. We also thought that the road gets a little bit tight in certain areas. And so we decided just to make the connection across ferry landing uh, in this area. And then the third key component of um, Dunkirk, um, is the the park to park connection? So here we've been looking at: is there enough space uh, in the public right of way to do an eight to ten foot shared use path? Um, we think there is. Uh, with a four foot buffer, is there an easy, relatively easy way to get over the uh, the streams uh, at the bottom of the hill? Uh, we think that with one of the cul culverts already having been extended. Uh, we could probably use that, although we could also do a, a small pedestrian bridge uh, across the stream, a boardwalk type uh, approach. Um, so those are the three big projects. I'm sorry, I realize now looking at my presentation that I forgot one. And let me just put that in here. That would be Dunkirk Way and the, uh, the right of way that exists also down to Apple Way uh, into the neighborhood there is another project that we think has promise and value. And Dunkirk Way would be structure similar to Town Center Boulevard, where you would uh, convert the outer lanes, uh, the outer travel lanes into bike lanes and have one lane in each direction with a two-way turn lane. So that's our concepts in Dunkirk. Uh, why don't I pause there, Tamara, and um, open it up to comments or questions about Dunkirk? And I'll let you moderate that, you or Jenny. Thank you, Jamie. If anybody has any questions or comments, if you would like to raise your hand and we'll call on you um, as we see you. Tamara, Anita Brown has a, her hand raised. Okay, Anita, if you'd like to unmute yourself. Anita. You muted yourself back. Okay, let me try it. Um, when you're talking about taking the left turn lane from Route 4 onto Town Center Boulevard down to one lane, that's just going to add a lot of backup or more congestion in that intersection on route four for the left turners into the shopping center. I mean, I think it's already the number five on the most wrecks in the county intersection. So I guess I have a concern there about taking it from two lanes down to one lane, not, not only the backup on route four, but 
since there's a safety issue with that intersection anyway, how would you handle that? Thanks, Anita. So I wanna make sure I'm understanding the question. I heard you talk about left turns from Route 4 into Town Center, On did I understand that? Yes, sir. So we wouldn't make any changes to 2-4 itself. All the changes would be on Town Center Boulevard. Right, but if, if you take Town Center Boulevard to one lane, then mm -hmm. you've got two left turn lanes from Route 4 onto it now. How are, how are you going to accommodate that? Let me just think about try to the best way to answer this question. So, okay, so none of the, I, I talked about the double being in the details. Thank you for reminding me here. So not in this area, the reduction to a single lane would not begin until just past the McDonald's. So roughly here where my cursor is. Okay, perfect. All right. Yes. So we would use the sidewalk and widen the sidewalk along the McDonald's and then transition into the street uh, just past it. Okay, that certainly makes more sense. I was trying to figure out how you were going to take two lanes from, from Route 4 and take it down to one lane and not, not cause things more, up, yes. more problems there on 4. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the sure, answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Um, we've got um, Steve followed by Sarah. Uh, yeah, hi, Steve Ober. Just a quick question. I, I had missed the initial portion of the discussion about how these bike lanes were going to cross Route 4. Is there no better way, you know, is, is there, a, is there a, this is going to sound crazy, but, it, you know, is there a tunnel option or something other than having people take bikes across Route 4? Um, I think the best way to answer that is there's always an option. The question is, is what is one willing to pay for it, right? Um, just based on other uh, projects we've done of a similar nature, given the width of 2-4 um, and the lack of a grade chain from one side to the other, a uh, pedestrian bridge would probably cost two and a quarter million or more. And our experience with pedestrian bridges, for example, is that when... Um, <clears throat> when you don't have a, a grade change from one side to the other, people tend to not use them anyway. Uh, a tunnel option uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be as, as dramatically even more expensive than that. Uh, so I'm, know, just wondering, I'm just wondering, I just wonder how realistic it is that a family is actually gonna take a set of bicycles and, and cross that highway, even at a, at a, at a, on a green light mm -hmm. uh, to make it, to, I mean, this sounds great, but I'm just wondering in practice whether it's actually realistic. So a couple of things. One thing we've looked at with um, State Highway is creating uh, a uh, bike pad only phase during uh, likely times when there are bicyclists. So in the evenings after rush hour uh, and on weekends would be one option. Some restriping and adjustments to the signal timing are also possible. And then, you know, I will say third is if you were to go out there in a, a late spring, early summer day, you'll see kids and families uh, doing it already, right? So our goal here would be to make it, you know, incrementally safer uh, without a, you know, two, three, four, five million dollar expenditure. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't agree with your last statement, but I hear what you're saying. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Okay, I see Sarah Bento. Yes, hi. Um, my question is about um, bike racks. Are bike racks a part of this plan? Uh, they certainly should be, yes. I mean, we were focused tonight on the, uh, on the paths, but yes, bike racks are you know, needed everywhere. So. And as we get new um, development plans in, we are looking at them and trying to add bike racks um, into shopping centers and parks and other places as they develop. Jenny and Jessica, any more questions or comments? Um, There's a question in the chat box. 
Um, Cynthia Gonzalez says, um, Jamie, you mentioned that bike lanes and paved shoulders are currently not used often. So there's no motivation to develop more of them or develop them safely. There's not, a, there's not lots of use because they're dangerous. If they become safer, more people will use them. Um, you've set up a negative redundant loop. I agree with you. I think what I was, what I was intending to say was that uh, our goal was to set priorities uh, in this process. And so where uh, we see the highest potential volume uh, of bike riders, we have or, uh, of bicyclists, that's where we've invested our efforts at this point. Um, we don't see many good paved shoulder options uh, in um, either Dunkirk or Prince Frederick. Not to say that people wouldn't do it and that it shouldn't be made safer, but when we get down to kind of priority setting, uh, we've, you're going to see a lot to chew on already uh, this evening. So, but I, I don't disagree with that. Um, that people don't ride there because it's not safe. Well, why? We, yeah, I got you. I agree. I agree. And Cynthia posted a, a reply. Thank you. And then Zeke Lyons posted a comment that it's um, not realistic that a family is going to load bicycles into a truck, take them to one of the parks, and go back and forth. So thanks for sharing your your thought there, Zeke Lyons. Okay. Do we have any more questions or comments on Dunkirk before we proceed to Prince Frederick? Okay. Um, I think we have one more um, from Debbie Flanagan. Will we have plans <clears throat> to connect the neighborhoods to the bike lanes? Let me go back to my Google map here. So uh, for whatever reason, I neglected to include the, um, the Apple Way uh, connection in this um, uh, right of way here. On the west side, um, in these neighborhoods here, um, you know, we think there's some bigger conversations to be had as part of the town center master plan uh, about what that connectivity should look like that was a little bit beyond our scope. Uh, so we what we focused on here was um, kind of from Ward Road slash um, uh, Smithville in, uh, but certainly, you know, to the extent that there's additional connectivity to happen from the neighborhoods, from Jones Road, et cetera, um, that, that should occur as part of the town center master plan. At this point, oh, we have another, uh, Zeke Lyons, you have the floor. Hi, is there any data on accidents, bike accidents in the Dunkirk area? Uh, we can pull it, we had done some, I mean, the short answer is there weren't very many, if any at all. Um, I'd have to go back and look. The last data we had was about 18 months or so. Good, thanks. Yeah, I, I love biking. I'm just concerned about biking in this area and um, with lots of trucks and lots of traffic. It, yeah. That all, that that, all makes that, me nervous, but I, I commend the, the effort and I'm just here to, to observe and participate. Thank you. And that's why I would just say that's why we did not focus on things that ran parallel to Maryland 2-4. Uh, we just didn't feel like you could get to any kind of low stress network. Uh, we fo focused on kind of keeping things off of Maryland 2-4. Okay. Should we go to uh, Prince Frederick? Should we still have, we've had some more questions uh, come in through the, um, the chat box, Jamie, for Dunkirk. Um, Sarah Bento is asking, at what stage in the planning is the solution for bikes and pedestrians crossing Route 4 determined? I heard a couple of possibilities, uh, uh, sorry, I heard a couple of possibilities with the signal, just wondering when this discussion would happen. So as we get to final design of these facilities, when the county, um, uh, if and when the county decides to pursue and proceed with any of these facilities, we would get to a final design stage. Um, and, and so I can't tell you exactly when, uh, but that would be a next step. Thank you, Jamie. And then uh, Anita Brown asks, where would parking be for the park entrance off of Ferry Landing Road? 
So again, we are not intending or not recommending a um, vehicular uh, entrance off of Ferry Landing Road, only a, a bicycle uh, pedestrian path uh, from the park uh, up the hill by the church and to the uh, parking lot of this, at the shopping center. Thank you, Jamie. I believe that is um, all we have for Dunkirk for the moment. Great. All right. Thank you, Jenny. Um, if you'd like to proceed to Prince Frederick, Jamie. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, Prince Frederick, more opportunities, uh, a little bit larger of an area. Uh, <clears throat> same challenge with Maryland 2-4, obviously. So we focus on uh, moving folks kind of within uh, the east side or the west side of 2-4 and then look for the best crossing opportunities we can find, but I'm sure the same um, conversation could, could occur that we just had in Dunkirk. Uh, we use Prince Frederick Boulevard, we use Armory Road and Main Street, um, uh, and then some longer term projects are listed there on the bottom of the screen as additional development uh, and roadway construction occurs. So let me just walk through each of these if I can. Uh, this is Prince Frederick Boulevard on your left there. Uh, there is uh, sufficient room to create a five foot uh, bike lane on each side of the road, kind of like you saw on um, Town Center Boulevard in, in Dunkirk. Uh, and then there are what, one, two, and then there's a third roundabout coming on uh, Prince Frederick north of Dares Beach that you would, we would widen the sidewalks approaching the roundabouts uh, and use those sidewalks to transition through the, through the roundabout. We would also make some adjustments to some of, some of the, um, the turning lanes. Uh, so for example, you'll, you'll see an example in a minute where uh, say where the uh, Starbucks is uh, and uh, people kind of jar jutting out of uh, the Starbucks into uh, oncoming traffic. We would kind of reroute some of those left turns. Uh, same up by Costly Way, we would create a left turn lane where one does not exist and then give a safe area for the bicyclists to proceed around them. So we do think that for most of Prince Frederick Boulevard, you can safely get in uh, a five foot uh, bike lane with a two or three foot buffer, depending on where you are, um, uh, up and down the entirety of, uh, of Prince Frederick Boulevard. Um, so that, and then obviously south of, um, south of Halloween Point, there is already a shared use path uh, along the, uh, the west side of uh, Prince Frederick Boulevard. And that was, um, you know, as part of the site planning process uh, for those air, for those um, subdivisions that shared use path was required. That's the type of planning we'd like to see going forward, and and have some uh, shared some ideas with the county staff about. So then, moving to Maryland two four, I'm sorry, moving to Dares Beach Road uh, east of Maryland two four. Uh, this is an area where we foresee a good opportunity for a shared use path, and so if you think about um, the area between the roundabout and um, Adderton in particular is where, um, um, really, I'm sorry, between the roundabout and Fox Run is where part of where the uh, uh, townhouse development is proposed and converting that frontage to be a shared use path, a 10 foot, maybe 12 foot shared use path. Um, and then over to the schools, there's a couple of options. Uh, that we've been looking at. Uh, one would be to kind of stay down towards the, the front of the road and the other would be up to uh, at the top of the hill uh, in front of the schools there, still working that through. But the idea is to get a facility that runs all the way out to the Harriet Brown Center and the uh, elementary school uh, on the far end uh, at Adderton Road. Um, and then building in some connectivity uh, with Armory Square and other redevelopment and as it occurs. Um, so those are the two uh, big projects would, again, Dares Beach and Halloween Point, the two, I'm, I'm sorry, Dares Beach and Prince Frederick Boulevard are the two near-term opportunities. You might say, well, why not Halloween Point? Why not the other side of Dares Beach Road um, and, and a couple of other places? So if ultimately more, um, I, I didn't change this here. If more development occurs towards College Station uh, across West Dares Beach Road, then we would recommend uh, 
improving Dares Beach Road, cleaning up some of the entrances here, uh, putting in some medians and making space for a bike lane, uh, and then extending that all the way through, towards College Station. Halloween Point Road has been interesting how it's been built. Uh, if you can see on the right-hand side here, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if you can see on the, on the right-hand side here, the SHA built a sidewalk that literally dumps you into the road. And I can't say I've ever seen them do that anywhere else. Uh, I'm very curious, but they've, they've set up the idea of having a continuous shared use path on the north side of Halloween Point. And if and as they ex uh, widen Halloween Point out towards the park and the college, uh, then we would have the opportunity to do this a little bit better. So we would ultimately recommend uh, an eight to 10 foot shared use path on the north side uh, of Halloween Point out to College of Southern Maryland uh, as Halloween Point is widened over, the, over time, if and as Halloween Point is widened. Um, and I should also say, you know, you've got Fox Run, you've got uh, other uh, pieces uh, of an Eastern Loop Road north of Dares Beach that those facilities would all be incorporated into the design and construction uh, with relative ease. So we're not, didn't spend any time on those here today. So why don't I pause on the priorities for um, Prince Frederick, again, being Prince Frederick Boulevard from Halloween Point up to Stokely and Dares Beach Road um, uh, out to the elementary school, if not a little bit beyond. Okay, does anyone have any questions this far? Would you like to raise your hand? While people are doing that, there is a comment, a question in the chat box from Robin Treslow from Calvert Library. Uh, Jamie, Robin's asking about, and the connectivity to the future Harriet Brown Community Center, which will be located on um, Fairground Road. Sure, so we, uh... Fairground Road, when it was reconstructed, was built, if I recall, in part with sidewalk uh, on one side, or was it both? I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, we think that is probably the best that will occur is maybe to be able to widen that sidewalk a little bit. Uh, but we think that uh, that facility is probably sufficient. Uh, we'd like to be able to get in some type of an on, some type of an on road facility, but we don't think it was built wide enough uh, necessarily to do so. Uh, so we're a little bit uncertain about anything else to do there on, on fairground. This is Jenny. We do have a question about Dunkirk. So we'll hold that for after uh, questions on Prince Frederick. But Anita, we'll circle back to your, your, your uh, statement or concern. Anyone else have any comments or questions on Prince Frederick? Ms. Truslow, I see your hand raised. If you can unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. I'm just trying to, I, you mentioned uh, the possibility of, of creating a path all the way down to, maybe you meant Halloween Point Park, all the, that far down, but I, I don't actually see that on the list unless you mean four and it would go as far as Halloween Point. I know that's way down. Yeah, so, yeah, so our uh, initial recommendation is let's get to the college, right? Let's get to the college safely, make that, um, you know, an accessible path. And then, you know, ultimately, yes, as things push down farther in terms of widening or, or improvements um, to get to um, the park. Uh, at this point, we felt it was challenging enough to get to, uh, to the college, but we can certainly show that on there as a, on this map as a future. This is Jenny. We have a um, question from Cynthia Gonzalez. How about people driving into Prince Frederick or Dunkirk who want to bike? Will planning and zoning encourage rent a bike entrepreneurs? Can citizens park in Prince Frederick or Dunkirk and bike walk segue around the towns? So that was directed to planning and zoning staff, but I think I'll maybe jump in and say on their behalf, absolutely. Uh, those are you know public parks uh, intended to be in, enjoyed by the public. And if you wanna 
it seems like a park-like activity to me is to, to park and hop on your bike and move around. And as far as um, making that an allowable use, that is something that um, will be looked at during the zoning ordinance um, as an allowable use. Someone could do that um, actually now if they wanted to. So that is something that is feasible for the town center. She has a follow-up um, statement. Most commercial establishments want only customers to utilize their parking facilities. I think that's where we would encourage um, people to park into public places such as the, the, um, the county parks or other facilities that the county owns. Okay, Mr. Bowen, I see your hand raised. Hi, thank you, Tamara. Uh, so a question I have is on um, Prince Frederick Boulevard. Uh, there was a um, new traffic light that was installed on, on um, Prince Frederick Boulevard at cross from, was it Beach Tree Apartments? Uh, and it completely cut off the shoulder. And so as you're driving, uh, riding your bike north on, um, on uh, Prince Frederick Boulevard, the shoulder disappears um, uh, at that traffic uh, light. Um, do you have a solution as how that could be fixed so that there can be a buffer between the bicycles and the cars at that location? The intersections are tricky everywhere uh, for bicyclists and good clear markings is you know, always the best uh, approach if you can't get a sh uh, a uh, a, sh uh, a shoulder or a, a clear area in there, I think we have proposed um, in our design plans uh, a solution to uh, DPW to consider. Uh, I don't know that we've actually had time to to really review it much with them yet, but I think we've proposed a solution to them. Yes. Thank you. And I see Sarah Bento. Your hand is raised. Yeah, um, I'm going to ask this question, but it, it might be a moot point. Just I'm not as familiar with Prince Frederick as I am with Dunkirk, um, but I was there is a hiking trail that goes out to the bay. So I was just wondering if like there was, you know, in talking about biking and, and also pedestrians, if there was any um, consideration for somehow connecting into that. This so is it's Jenny. Okay. I yep. believe you're talking about the Prince Frederick to the Bay Trail which was yes. um, uh, spearheaded by the American Chestnut Land Trust along with the county and the um, um, St. John Vianney Catholic Church. Uh, we have the executive director of ACLT on the line with us, Greg Bowen, but I believe that trail does not allow biking. So while um, it certainly is a, a destination, I don't think that the ACLT is encouraging bicycling. Greg, could you please uh, chime in? Yeah, see, the terrain is is, is so rough. <clears throat> uh, it's it's great a great exercise for hikers, but a lot of the slopes are so steep that and and the soils are so highly erodible that uh, maybe bicyclists could get up, but they would pretty well tear up the uh, the trail. That's been our main major concern. Although we would love to find a place for uh, a bicycle trail. Um, that location would not be really suitable for bikes. Perhaps, perhaps um, bicycle um, parking, then, then people could get off bike to the trail and then hike the trail, perhaps? Absolutely. Thanks, Sarah, for your question. Do we have we any have and we have found that recreation is um, activities during uh, COVID, they've certainly um, seen an increase in the number of people who are interested in getting outdoors. Okay, do we have any more questions or comments on Prince Frederick? Did right, you wanna go back to the one in Dunkirk? Yes, um, seeing no one with their hand raised, um, we have a, a comment about uh, Dunkirk, and it's from uh, Miss Anita Brown. I understand it is a pedestrian entrance only from Ferry Landing Road. 
but biking or walking down Ferry Landing Road with no shoulders is not really safe. I would be concerned that parking to use the entrance would be in the shopping center and the merchants might not appreciate that. What we see a lot of at the moment is a, most of the time um, that concerns us about this entrance is that you see a lot of kids that are within the park that leave the park to go to McDonald's or they leave the park to go to the shopping centers. So we're trying to create um, not only for bicycles, but a, a safe pedestrian entrance and way for them to get in and out of the park instead of trying to go down Route 4. Um, to do that. So that is um, a consideration also. Um, Mr. Bowen, I see your hand. You want to unmute? Yes, thank you. So Jamie, I was wondering if you've ever encountered a place where I know, I know Route 4 is a high volume road, four lane highway, but in many cases it has a very wide shoulder. Uh, on a lot of occasions, I've ridden a bike on Route 4. Um, I just wish there were at least more visual protections and visual warnings. I, I, are, are, aren't there examples some places in the country where people have been able to safely establish shoulder lanes on four-lane highways? Um, you know, I'm sure there are. Typically, you know, it's it's best done with a side path um, rather than a shoulder. I mean, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a place in Maryland where it, it's been signed. I'm sure there are. I know that SHA is very reluctant to do so for safety reasons, uh, but I'm sure they I'm sure they have in some places. Um, as I was thinking, we've, we've, Ballard, we've, been, we've been focused in this project, we've been focused really on circulation within the town centers mm -hmm. uh, for largely the reason that you raise, which is that, you know, you've got, we're focused on all ages and abilities and those folk that those, the average biker is not going to use something that's parallel to Maryland 2-4. So we've not really been terribly focused on that. Okay, do we have any more questions or comments? Jamie, if you want to proceed. Sure, so what's next? Uh, these are good and nice ideas. I might say some are great, but what do I know? Um, <clears throat> so we, there's a few next steps here. Um, you know, DPW, Planning and Zoning and SHA, need to put together their heads uh, and figure out uh, some implementation steps. Some of these things are uh, like Prince Frederick Boulevard, where there's a resurfacing plan could be implemented with relative ease. Uh, other pieces like the ward, uh, like the park to park connection uh, require uh, a lot more thinking, planning and, and engineering. Um, integrating these things into the town center master plans uh, will be uh, a significant uh, something significant for the county to hang its hat on when developers come in uh, and have projects that the county can point to the town center master plans and say there is you know, intended to be a bicycle lane here or a side path there uh, across, uh, you know, in front of your property. And we'd like for it to be uh, designed and constructed as such. Uh, the county also needs to update some of its design standards uh, to better accommodate roadways. And when they resurface, um, roads, like I mentioned, Prince Frederick, but there will be others to install those uh, bicycle lanes and markings and, and signs. Circling with DPW and, and planning and zoning to uh, come up with those um, kind of low hanging fruit uh, approaches, some of which you saw tonight. Uh, and you know, as, as the planning commission and board of county commissioners review this plan, uh, they're gonna decide on what the next step is in terms of uh, fundable priorities. Uh, and then obviously DPZ will be aggressive as they have been uh, in securing whatever outside funding they can to move these forward. 
So we're excited to share it with you. I know that uh, people have been waiting for a while to get this. Appreciate that you hung with us to get to get this far. Thank you, Jamie. So that concludes our presentation for tonight. Um, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your participation. Um, in the chat box, I am putting um, my email address. If you would like to submit written comments, we will take written comments up until the close of business on July 18th, um, 2022. And we welcome any comments that you would like to um, submit to us on the draft um, that Jamie presented to us tonight. So with that being said, that concludes our presentation for tonight. Thank you for coming. Mara, just yeah. one, you said July 8th, July. I'm sorry, January 18th, 2022. I'm skipping way ahead. I'm sorry, January 18th, 2022. So that's next Tuesday. We will take written comments until then. So thank you for coming. Everyone have a good night.